Okay, so inside the property, um, there's a fair amount going on behind me. A little bit of a disclaimer as well. This is a work in progress at my own property. So there's a couple of uh, pipe works if you're a keen plumber um, where you'll notice I've not got my PRV connections finished off yet, which like I said, is a work in progress. But to give you an idea of what you're gonna need space-wise available, this is, a, this is a pretty good setup. There are some variations where we can minimize the space required, which I'll go on to shortly. But just to talk you through the setup that I've currently got here in this garage space is we've got a domestic hot water cylinder here. This is a heat pump ready hot water cylinder. So it's not a standard unvented cylinder. What that basically means is it's got more surface area inside the cylinder. So if you notice my flow and return here, all of this is to be insulated by the way, um, we've got a huge coil. So it's probably twice the size of what an ordinary indirect hot water cylinder is um, and that is transferring the heat to the energy of the water that's inside which is going to give us our hot water um, so we need space for this of course and that needs to be appropriately sized for the home um, we've got I believe it's a 300 litre cylinder here so it's a, sorry 250 litre cylinder here that's designed on the amount of rooms in the house and the amount of occupants inside the house generally you look at 45 litres uh, of hot water you need for um, each room. So if it's a four bedroom pop property, 45 litres per bedroom, plus one extra lot of 45 litres. Uh, in your master bedroom, you tend to have two people. So that's always been the general rule of thumb that I've worked to in regards to designing the hot water requirements based on your property. So it's 45 litres per bedroom and an extra lot of 45 litres uh, for the master bedroom, add them all together, that should really give you the literage of hot water you need for your property. So as I said, that's a that's a heat pump ready unvented cylinder. Moving on to the pipe work, we've got some spaceship looking things here. That's what customers tend to call these. It's called an expansion vessel. This red one is relating to the heating system. Okay, so that's a heating expansion vessel. And the white one here is regulating the pressure and the hot water cylinder. It's very important, it's a common um, thing that we come across, these don't get serviced uh, on an annual basis and this is uh, for gas boiler systems and also for heat pump systems. It's very important, these are getting serviced annually just like a gas boiler, just like a heat pump. And at this point on our services at Glow, we would be servicing these and making sure they've got the correct air pressures inside of them, which are set on the data badge. So if you wanna check out the data badge, it will tell you what pressure you should have inside of these. So um, check them out. And if they're feeling really, really heavy on a wall, it's quite common they're falling off because they're full of water, which is more reason why they need to be checked and done on an annual service. As I was saying, you've got two expansion vessels up here, a uh, central heating one, which is usually red, can be blue sometimes as well. And this is your potable hot water expansion vessel, which uh, most occasions is white like it is there. This wouldn't work on a, on a hot water cylinder. Okay, so it needs to be the correct expansion vessel and the correct part of the system, which is when you get an expert business in like ourselves to obviously make sure that's all running smoothly and it's obviously being installed correctly. On this hot water cylinder as well, it's worth mentioning that um, we've got a secondary hot water pump. So this is to minimize the dead legs that we have on the system. So with this uh, cylinder being fitted in the garage, we've got a pump here, which is circulating the hot water. So it's essentially got a loop. So rather than it taking 20, 30 seconds uh, to get hot water at the kitchen sink, we've got you know a, a draw off which is gonna be uh, a few seconds. So again, secondary hot water pump, if you've got a large property, it really is worth worthwhile in installing that and extra pipe work to minimize dead legs. And also there's legionnaires to think about as well in regards to the safety of uh, any uh, hot water around the home. What you might notice as well is the size of the pipe work if you're, if you're eager-eyed. Um, you can see the old, uh, the old gas boiler was fitted here and our old pipe work went up through the roof. We've actually installed new primaries and these primaries are our flow and return from the heating system. They're 28 mil in diameter. Ordinarily, what's most common in domestic homes is these pipes are 22 mil and that's what they were in this property before. So we have ran new 28 mil copper pipes through the main primary pipe work in the house to ensure that we get that flow that I was talking about through the system. So we really are looking for a tight DT here. So that means water's moving through the system a lot faster. So we need to make sure these are sized correctly so we don't get excessive noise. Um, and also again, so we're getting the efficiency 
out of the heat pump. We want this heat pump to stay on low and slow for a long period of time. We want that compressor to have as minimal startups as possible so we're gaining the efficiency out of it. And you can only do that by having appropriately sized radiators and pipe work to make sure you know it's running it's running nice and efficiently so we've got to think about the electrical system as well so with the heat pump it is going to be drawing more electricity from the grid um, which will mean you will need to route obviously some of this uh, electrical cables here back to your consumer unit so that in some cases can be problematic in regards to the run that you've got to uh, put in that being said there's no way around it we need to get power to where we need it um, and we also need to do a DNO application to the local local ne electrical network um, to make sure that the property is okay um, to have a heat pump installed. At this point, you'd be assessing the electric meter itself, checking the amperage there to make sure that it's fit for purpose as well as filling in your application. A couple of other things that you may have noticed whilst you've been watching me is we've got a, a, a water softener here. Highly recommend in hard water areas. It's going to um, improve the wear and tear on you know, taps and things like that. Get nice soft water as well. A lot of benefits to that. Really, really easy systems to install. And this one's working nicely here. If I look and move over just to this side, we've got this um, this vessel, um, which I'm using as a volumizer without getting too complicated about it. This is providing flow um, and additional volume to the system. And what it means is this heat pump that's at the rear of the property here is going to stay on longer and it's going to have the flow so it's going to be able to dissipate the, the heat around the system. If I didn't have this and I've got thermostatic radiator valves on, on every radiator at the property, I'd be decreasing the volume in the system therefore that heat pump out there could short cycle a lot more which again is not great for the heat pump. So the way that I've installed this is all the water that's coming back from the central heating system which if you follow this blue lever valve down is returning water it's going to return into this volume of water, which is 50 litres in here, I believe, and then back to the heat pump. So if all my radiators do close down, I've still got a volume of water here where the flow on the heat pump outside is still there and not do too much damage to the heat pump, essentially. There are other ways of uh, installing this. This could be installed as something called a buffer. If you've heard of that, you've done any research before. Um, and that would ordinarily work where you would have something called hydronic separation. So that may look slightly different. You would have two pipes going in one side and you'd have another two pipes coming out the other side. And it would mean an additional secondary pump this side, okay? But I'm using the pump, the central heating pump that's inside the heat pump, as opposed to installing another um, secondary heat pump. So you can install, um, install these either as a volumizer or a buffer. They don't always have to be separate to the cylinder. So if I move back over to the cylinder, there are some cylinders out there where this volumizer, and one, when I keep talking about it, we're talking about volume when we're talking, talking about adding additional capacity and volume to the system, can sit at the bottom of the tank and it will be separate from your hot water. If you um, was installing this in an airing cupboard, that's a really good option because you're gonna save space. And this is one of the challenges when you're looking at installing a heat pump and in, obviously installing the hot water cylinder because you need to do it because it's gonna run off your heat pump. You need to maximize the space that you've got sometimes. On them occasions, we would install this volumizer underneath the tank to, to maximize the space we've got available. Um, because as you can see, there's a lot going on here and uh, it's important that you know, we're mindful and we're finding the best solution for your home. If you've got space and you can put it in a garage like this, then that makes a lot of sense as well from a maintenance perspective as much as anything, but also in meaning that we can install the appropriate gear in the best way, again, to maximize the efficiency at the heat pump. So if you're going to start looking at costs with ourselves, we're looking around £10,000 to £15,000 for installation of a heat pump because very, very simply, it's not just a heat pump that we're installing. We're going to be looking at the central heating system as a whole. We're not a business which are going to be installing something which isn't going to be fit for purpose, isn't going to have longevity. We're going to have a heat pump that's going to be installed in the best possible way. So that's why there's quite a variation of costs. The heat pumps are, are expensive, um, more expensive than a gas boiler in comparison. There's a lot of more design um, to make sure we get this right. There are a lot of benefits to installing a, a heat pump. Whether it's right for you in your home, and your property, there's a lot to be discussed there. We're more than open to discussing this with you and having a chat about your requirements. If you want to find out more, please feel free to contact the team on our office number or visit our website and register your interest. 
and we'll um, be able to talk to you a little bit more about it. Thank you.